Sports. We are Sports. We are LA. Absolutely gorgeous day for baseball here at Fenway Park. The Halos try to bounce back after the defeat on Saturday night. It is the rubber game of the series between the Angels and the Boston Red Sox from inside Fenway Park. We're glad you could join us for Angels baseball here on Fox Sports West. A pretty good pitching matchup for the Angels. Hector Santiago is throwing the ball exceptionally well going up against the left-hander Wade Miley. Yeah, it should be a very good pitching matchup. They generally don't think so in this Fenway Park with two left-handers. But both have been throwing the ball very well. Hector the entire season. ERA last seven starts, one 9-0. Miley's been throwing the ball well. His last two starts dominating with his cutter inside. The only good thing is that Miley doesn't throw a knuckleball, so the Angels offense might be able to swing the bats this afternoon as we're just about ready for baseball in Boston. Sit back and relax. Line up some first pitch when we return. Brought to you by CarMax. Start the search for your next car at CarMax. CarMax, start here. And by Jack in the Box. Try the new legendary buttery Jack from Jack in the Box today. We welcome you back out to Boston, Massachusetts, site of the game three of this three game series. Of course, the American flags there at the Boston Commons area in the commemoration of uh, Memorial Day weekend. So, wherever you're at, you hope you're with your family and uh, you've had a loved one that uh, lost their life uh, in battle for our country we uh, we hope that uh, they are in your thoughts and uh, you can enjoy the uh, the rest of the weekend in peace and uh, obviously uh, we're very thankful for those that have lost their lives and continue to serve our our great country and of course uh, that being said there is a meaningless baseball game if you will when you put it into perspective being played this afternoon the angels trying to bounce back after a uh, tough loss last night cj wilson uh, just didn't have his best stuff, and obviously Mike Napoli certainly had his number. A couple of home runs for Napoli, and the Angels are looking for a series win this afternoon. 
They will be facing a left-handed pitcher, which is good because they have fared better against left-handed pitching compared to that of right-handed pitching. Let's take a look at Mike, uh, Mike Sosha's lineup for the Angels today at 22 and 21. They'll have Eric Ibar leading things off at shortstop, Mike Trout at center, Albert Pujols at first base, Cole Calhoun at right, David Fries at third, Chris Ionetta back behind the plate, CJ Crone gets a start this afternoon. He's the DH. We had a late scratch today. Colin Calgill originally scheduled to start in left, but a uh, back issue forced him out during batting practice, so Matt Joyce gets to start in left field. And Taylor Featherston takes over at second base tonight. He will bat ninth. Um, Johnny Giovatello is struggling still offensively on this road trip. They are taking on the 28-year-old left-hander native of Louisiana and in his first season with the Boston Red Sox, it's uh, Wade Miley. Hey, man. Miley's fastball is 88-93, to 93. slider, curveball, changeup, cut fastball. To be successful, my go-to is against Miley. Turn on that heater in, especially that cut fastball in, and slow down his rhythm. He is a extremely quick worker. Very good move to first, but to slow him down enough so you can dictate the pace in that batter's box. Check out the Red Sox defensively behind Miley, Ramirez, Betts, and Castillo in the outfield from left to right. Holt, Bogarts, Pedroia, Napoli in the infield from third to first. Sandy Leone sees action for the first time of the series behind the plate. And Betts in center field has made some unbelievable plays already this season in that position. Last year played second, center, right field to settle in as their everyday center fielder. 40 is starting that position, and he can go back on a baseball as well as anybody in the game. Eric Ibo ready to lead things off last night. The loss for the Angels was 8-3. to C.J. Wilson took the uh, loss, 2-3 uh, and three on the season. Stephen Wright, the knuckleballer, picked up the win. Second knuckleballer the Angels have faced on this road trip, and those ended up being losses. Ibar swinging first pitch, lines went out to left. Hanley is there, and there's the first out of the ballgame. The Angels did take... Uh, some batting practice today was optional, but it was on the field. And uh, most of the regulars were out there. Albert Trout, Ibar, Cole Calhoun. So even with this uh, stretch of 20 straight games that the Angels are on and with a, a day game after a night game, guys wanted to swing the bats. And I would imagine a lot of that has to do with facing normal batting practice after seeing a knuckleball last night as Trout takes a strike. Yeah, to start to track the baseball better once again. That's what you try to do in. The thing with Miley, too, when you think about it, he doesn't waste any time. He's on the third base side of the pitching rubber. Generally, left is on the opposite side. Pulled to third. Brock Holt, third straight start for him at the hot corner. Throws out Trout. And there are two away. Well, it's customary for Albert Pujols. He has a routine, so he was making sure he was going to get some swings in today. And, boy, was he crushing the baseball and in batting practice this morning and early afternoon. Albert hitting 235, fade home runs, 16 runs batted in his seven doubles. Picked his seventh up uh, last night. And they're going one for four. Angel struck first in that first inning, gets right for two runs, but then uh, they, uh, the offense, anyway, went into shutdown mode. Did not score another run to the eighth inning, but by then the uh, damage had been done. And you can see where he's standing on that third base side of the pitching rubber. Throws across his body slightly, so he's got good deception. Good stuff, good fastball, good movement. We'll cut the fastball inside, but it's all about that deception, hiding the baseball as he delivers it. Three balls and one strike. Mentioned Miley in his first season with the Boston, acquired in the offseason deal with the Arizona Diamondbacks for Ruby De La Rosa, Alan Webster, plus an infielder. And that is skied out to center. Mookie Betts, you know, with that sunshine, and it is a perfect day for baseball. No clouds in the sky. The Angels go down in order. We'll head to the bottom of the first. Hector Santiago on the hill for the Angels with no score.
Knights with the win last night. They are 20 and 23. Three and a half back in the American League East. Dustin Pedroia, the leadoff man, is second. Mookie Betts is center. Hanley Ramirez in left. David Ortiz, the cleanup hitter in DH. Xander Bogarts in short. Mike Napoli, he had the two home runs last night. Let's play first base. Rusny Castillo in right field. Brock Holt at third. And it's Sandy Leone. The switch hitting catcher batting nine. Thinking on Hector Santiago. Three and two. Put 2.25 ERA. Yeah, he's been throwing the ball very well, very well on the road also. Take a look at his pitch percentage. He throws quite a few fastballs. That includes a cut fastball, 71%. With a changeup, slider, curveball from Hector. Hector falls behind here. Two balls and no strikes. Pedroia, 278. See that changeup at 16%. He's throwing a lot more of those very effective changeups. Hector coming off of three very good starts. Picked up the win his last start. Two runs, one earned. Seven innings of work against the Blue Jays. This one's fouled back. Prior to that, gave up a run to Colorado and no decision. No runs and no decision against Houston. Six and a third. Amazing, you've got two uh, left hand pitchers here and uh, both very similar. Not to, I think it doesn't work as far off to the third base side as uh, Miley does. I think Miley may look or may make Hector look slow <laughs> as far as the way he works. And and Hector's that's usually pretty quick. That's almost impossible. Monday key for this game with that pitch away by Hector Santiago. Although Allison Chains. I stay away. Live that fastball away to change up back toward the slider. Show enough fastballs in to open that outer part of the plate, but stay away the whole game for Hector Santiago. And, and the, you say that, but the, the one thing that's really kind of turned things around for Hector is his ability and uh, lack of fear of establishing in to the right handed batters. Yeah, most times in form to be able to get them away from looking on the outer half of the plate. That's what you have to do. That's a pretty good pitch in the outside corner. But again, when you got your catcher reaching back like that, very difficult for an umpire to call that a strike and an umpire that likes to call strikes there today. Big swing and a miss by Mookie Betts. Two balls and one strike. Well, he's been able to get his cut fastball and slider in very effectively against right-handed batters. And all of a sudden, that outer part of the plate is wide open for him. Missing away on Betts here, and it's three and one now. Betts hitting 238, five home runs, 24 runs batted in. Came into the game as a substitute last night. Shane Victorino, who subsequently got placed on the DL. This one's out to right. Cole is there. Now backs up, makes the catch, two down. Tell you what, the baseball was carrying very well. This is a small ball, ballpark to begin with as far as anything hitting the air. And it's a warm afternoon here after having uh, cool temperatures yesterday and uh, a lot of wind here. The temperatures didn't get above the mid 60s here. Temperatures in the low 80s here this afternoon. A very little breeze. And I was very fortunate on this weekend here with the, the weather. And Ramirez steps into the batter's box. And 264 as he takes outside. Well, it's amazing from our angle up here to be able to see down on the pitching mound. Both lefties, you mentioned, on the favor of that third base side of the pitching rubber. Both are landing almost in the same exact spot. Both throw across their body enough to create deception. You see that landing area for Hecker. He has those two lines he draws down the by the pitching rubber for staying in that lane. Foul tipped into the mitt. One and two. That's that cutter in on a righty. Talked about Victor. See those lines right there? That's where Hector tries to land right on that one line. Still be able to create deception. Hides the baseball well, but that's the spot both pitchers landing almost the exact same area. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. David Ortiz on deck. 
certainly like that pitch inside against Ramirez. Remember, game one of the series got hit on the hand with a fastball inside. They go back inside, but that was a mislocation. Did you just see Hector's reaction as Ramirez fouled that one off to the right. Ramirez, or, uh, should say Santiago, spun around and just kind of looked out towards center field, looked very angry with himself. I mean, that's a pitch hit. Ramirez hits well, and he fouled that one straight back. One thing about this ballpark, you don't want to miss location. As we saw last night, got him with the off speed pitch. The helmet goes flying, and it's a one, two, three inning for Hector Santiago. We'll head to the second with no score. One, two, three innings. Cole Calhoun, David Freeze, Chris Ionetta for the Angels here in the second. Cole swinging first pitch. It's a lazy fly ball to left. One out. And now it's time for tools of the trade brought to you by Ram Trucks. After that fly out from Cole Calhoun, we're going to go back to Cole Calhoun and his great glove work so far on this road trip in Baltimore that dive once again Cole Calhoun diving face first and did the same thing in Toronto well, let's go back to last year here in Fenway Park where Cole made an unbelievable play leaping over the wall bringing that baseball back Cole Calhoun could do it all going forward and going back David Fraze lines one to right Castillo is there two outs Freeze coming into that at bat was three for five in his career versus Miley. Hit that ball extremely well. Great at Castillo in right field. Two up, two down. Chris Side at the plate. Had the night off last night with Carlos Perez behind the dish. But uh, Chris, in Friday night's game, ended up going one for three with a home run. It was a three run shot. It was a Nine run. Fifth inning for the Angels. Also drew a couple of walks. I thought Burley worked fast. Yeah, Miley. Miley's unbelievable. One and two. In the dirt. Well, from Louisiana. Yeah. Neighbor growing up, Britney Spears. Things that make you go home. Mm, yes. 2 2. 
fouled back. <laughs> Supplemental Oops, first round. You did it again, did you? <laughs> By the Diamondbacks. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> that was back in 2008, a Southeastern Louisiana State. Still makes his home in Louisiana. And then it pops it up. Middle of the infield. Let's see who wants it. Pedroia taking charge. And the Angels go down in order. We'll head to the bottom of the second inning with no score here at Fenway Park. .com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment with in-game highlights, live look-ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet today. David Ortiz, Xander Bogarts, and Mike Napoli here in the second against Hector Santiago. The Angels uh, put on the old triangle defense on the right side of the infield with Big Poppy at the plate. Is 233 on the season. Six home runs, 17 RBIs. This is a broken man. Two hopper to Albert, who has to deal with the barrel heading his way. And there's the first down. Boy, to shatter the bat. Even last night's game, he got that broken, and he ended up finishing off the bat in the dugout, breaking the rest of it over his leg. Look how much the bat shattered the barrel of the bat going a long way. That's almost like the. Uh, the Jimmy Reese fungo, where Jimmy basically sliced off the uh, from the, the label down flat surface so he can scoop up the baseball when he's hitting ground balls. Tell you what, that's a pretty good bat to take back to a schoolyard and play stickball with at yeah. this point. Got to tape it up a little bit. Yeah. Don't want the splinters. No, the splendid splinter. No. Xander Bogart's a shortstop. Takes downstairs. Two balls, no strikes. No wood bats back in the day. Were, uh, were tough to come by. They were kind of pricey. So whenever we had, I don't know if you ever had any, but they'd crack a little bit just above the handle. Just take those little nails, little oh, wood nails. No question. Hammer back down, tape it up. You'd still feel the vibration, but it was all in one piece. Oh, yeah. That one, not so much. No. Maybe some gorilla group might help out. Yeah, that, that does work, though. This is fouled back. That's a couple of baseballs working its way up here. Yeah. And close. Closer, closer to Terry Smith and Mark Langston on the radio side. Uh, Langer's a gold glover. He'll make the play. Yeah. And a good drummer, too. Unbelievable on the drums. <laughs> Bogart's hitting 270 on the season. Fouls this one back. The count remains at two balls and two strikes. Hector with a couple of strikeouts in the first inning.
couple of opposite teams here as far as uh, the batting average for the teams. Whereas the Angels have fared better against left handed pitching. It's the opposite for the Boston Red Sox. They've hit 250 against right handed pitching, just 202 against lefty pitching. This is lined and just beyond the reach of Eric Ibar. And it's the first base run of the ball game, a one out single by Bogarts. And now it's time for our T Mobile game changes. The splendid splinter. Mentioned him a little bit ago. Ted Williams missed three full seasons and most of two others serving World War II in the Korean War. Flew 38 combat missions in the Korean War. When you put it in perspective how much time he missed serving our country, 321 career home runs and a batting average of 344. He's an amazing player and human being, Ted Williams was. Napoli looks at a strike. Yeah, back in 84, I did an autograph session with Ted Williams back in Philadelphia area, and he was unbelievable. It was an amazing moment, especially because my dad got a chance to meet him. He was kind of moving me to the side, my dad, to get a chance to talk to Ted Williams. Napoli launches this one out to straightaway center field. Trout looks up, and that is gone. The red hot Mike Napoli strikes again. It's 2 0 Boston. Thing with Napoli when he gets a chance to get his arms extended. Boy, does he crush a baseball. Doesn't matter where it's hit. We saw a couple last night to left field, and here now to center field. Out over the plate, arms extended, and anything elevated also is going to be hit hard by Napoli. That's 18 career home runs for Napoli against his former team. Rusty Castillo, the batter, and he swings through the high fastball. It's one ball, one strike on the right fielder. Castillo called up for the game on Friday. First taste of uh, big league life this year. Got into 10 games last year. Two for eight this season. The first two games, I should say. And a single last night going one for four. For Napoli, that's his eighth home run now with 19 RBIs. Starting to get hot for Boston. He uh, came into the series batting just 178. Chopper to short. Kind of an odd hop at the very end. Played well by Eric Ibar. Dabbler with four home runs this weekend. So two outs, nobody on, and here's Brock Holt, the third baseman. Angels have not seen Pablo Sandoval at all during this weekend series. Hit by a pitch against the Texas Rangers last week. He is still sore, so Brock Holt had the opportunity to play some third base. We'll look at the strike. Holt hitting 295, a home run, and 11 runs batted in. One for three game last night with a walk and a single. Over oh, two. This one out to left. Joyce is there. And the inning comes to an end, but out before Boston strikes first. A two run blast by Napoli will head to the third. Halo's down 2 0.
It'll be Crone, Joyce, and Featherston here in the third inning for the Angels. TJ with an even 200 batting average. Four doubles, one home run. It's driven in six. He's played uh, somewhat sparingly on this road trip. Chop system to the left side. It's Brock Holt. One down. And as Matt Joyce steps to the plate, we'll take a look at the Honda upcoming schedule. Memorial Day tomorrow, and it's a 6 5 start against San Diego Padres. Pods in town for three. Tigers in for four, and then the Rays for three. Got a big fireworks spectacular tomorrow after the game. Another one on Saturday. And on Sunday, that's a, an ESPN game, so that'll be a, a Sunday night game. It's at 5, five o'clock start, five right? 5 o'clock, 5.05. 5 5. Pretty good teams coming into town at the Big A. Yeah. And Tampa Bay, everyone has anticipated them struggling this year. And they pitched so well. Matt Joyce takes down and away. The race sitting atop the American League East to start of the day. A game and a half lead over the Yankees. 24 and 20. Joyce fouls it back. And East is bunched up still. New York, then Baltimore, Boston, three and a half back. Toronto, five and a half back. Toronto trying to avoid uh, getting swept by the Seattle Mariners today in Toronto. Joyce skies one. Just went out of the shallow center. It's Bogarts, a shortstop, drifting out. Two outs. And I'm still surprised at John Gibbons. Allegedly, he's on the hot seat. Now, I know you can't fire 25 players, and it's got to be the manager to take. But, I mean, uh, at some point, Alex Anthopoulos has got to see the bullseye on his back. He's the general manager. And, uh, granted, they've had some injuries to young pitchers, you know, some of their big prospect guys coming up over the last couple of years. But uh, the pitching staff is what it is for the Blue Jays. Yeah, and they're struggling both down at the bullpen, the starting staff. You have a, a very potent offense, but you can't win every game scoring seven, eight runs. Eventually that taxes your, your team, and it certainly taxes your manager. Featherston reaches out and punches one to right center. Castillo puts it away, and the Angels are down in order. Nine up, nine down for Wade Miley. We'll head to the bottom of the third. Two nothing, Boston. Memorial Day weekend, Fox Sports proudly supports Folds of Honor and its mission of providing educational scholarships to families of military members who have been killed or disabled while serving our country. For more information on how you can help this worthy mission, visit foxsportsupports.com. Those flags you see there that uh, 
on your screen. 37,000 flags on the grounds of the Boston Common on our Memorial Day weekend. So much history here in this city. And you got an opportunity to see a lot of that yesterday. I did. Sandy Leone, the catcher, has a one ball, one strike count. Nine, one, and two for Boston here in the third. Troy on deck, bats to follow. One and two. There's Pedroia. They all hitting 152 with a couple of runs batted in. This one down the right field line. Long run for Featherson and Calhoun Cole calls everybody off makes the running catch one down. Where did he go a long way to make that play? We showed him on our highlights a little earlier about some of the plays he's made on this road trip so far. Look how far he has to go. He plays a pretty deep right field, but tracked that one well. Hector wanted to do baseball and as he fired it to uh, Chris Ionetta, he airmailed everybody. Just throw it straight to the backstop. Now, see, that's changing eye line. Yeah, that's, that's old school. Yeah. That means you're not going to be comfortable at the plate, you would think. <laughs> Arnetta jumped tough and kind of ran into John Hirschbeck, the home plate umpire. Pedroia strikeout victim in the first. Some, upstairs. Somewhere out there watching this game, Bruce Keeson, former Red Sox and Angel, would love to see that. He used to love when you, you know, accidentally got rid of a baseball a little bit high, made it to the backstop in the air. He goes, wow, ah, now they'll be uncomfortable. But not lob it though. You got to throw it firm, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And he also gave us. We had a speech in in spring training every year when you have a hitter up there. And he's kind of tracking all your pitches. Well, this call timeout, and the, and the good ones never track it. But sometimes you'll get a hitter. You just lob it up there real high, and they'll track it up high. And in the very next pitch, quick throw it down and away. They'll get an easy out. At least that's what he told us, anyhow. I don't know if it ever worked. <laughs> <laughs> I even tell that to my high school kids. Hey, if everything looks bad out there and a the guy's seeing the ball well, call timeout through that high throw. This one yanked foul. One and two. But you're better off just hitting them. <laughs> <laughs> I had enough base runners as it was. I didn't need to add another base runner. Two balls and two strikes on Pedroia with one out. Two nothing Boston. This one foul back just below us. That was fairly close. Yeah. I remember one year he hit one back up here, hit this back wall, and made it all the way back to the pitcher's mound. So you Pedroia. Sure was the wall that it hit? <laughs> My skillet glove, maybe? <laughs> This one punched up the middle, and it's a one-out single for Pedroia. He's thinking about two, and he slams on the brakes. Joyce gets the baseball back in. Single for Pedroia. Puts a man off for Mookie Betts. Yeah, if you ever want, want to watch the game play the right way, it's Pedroia. So he's hitting. That was a good pitch from Hector. Right away out of the batter's box. If he feels that Joyce is not going to charge that baseball, he might try to turn it into a double. Even the other night when the score was, what, 11 to 3, diving in the outfield grass on a ground ball. He just plays the game the right way. So Ibar get a double that way last night. Because the grass is so thick here. If you hit one of those slow rollers you know, in the alley towards the outfield, they've got a long run themselves to go get that baseball. 1-0 count on Benz. You certainly saw with that turf in yeah. Toronto also. That's a good view. Foul off to the right. That's a fly ball to right field in the first inning. So he's 0 for 1. It's in that leadoff spot Friday night. He's batted in the uh, number two spot. Yesterday he had the day off it said, uh, until Victorino came out of the game with the leg injury, hamstring issue. Subsequently placed on the DL. Two balls, one strike. The Angels also making a move today as Mike Morn was placed on the 15-day disabled list. The Halos calling up Cam Bedrosian. 
Lauren going on the DL with an oblique strain. Foul back. Fifty one pitches for Santiago, thirty three strikes, a couple of punch outs, three hits allowed. Red Sox do not run a whole lot, just fourteen stolen bases on the season. One fewer than the Angels with fifteen. Two two inside full count. Handler Ramirez on deck. I believe Pedroia is going to be going here though. Doesn't go and Bass hits one out to right. Cole back. Just shy of the track is there. Pedroia back to first base. He's not going anywhere as Cole gets the baseball back in. Two down. It's the 11th fly ball out combined between the two lefties in this game so far. We're only in the third inning. Four fly ball outs for Hector. Seven for Miley. Hanley a strikeout victim in the first. That's the first one back. Came in batting 264. 10 home runs and 22 runs batted in. Couple of singles last night for Hanley. One mistake so far for Santiago. That was to Napoli. And Napoli covered it. Straight away center field for a two run shot. 18th career home run for Napoli against the Angels. Most of any active player now in baseball against the Angels. The trade that continues to haunt. Since Napoli had left the Angels in 2011, as far as most home runs against the Angels. Two balls and one strike. You don't see that stance too often anymore. Feet very close together. This chasing high fastball. That high leg kick before he gets into a swing a lot of times when you see some but Bobby Benilla had that same type of thing with a high leg kick if you can just throw something all speed throw him his timing off you can see there away again he got him earlier too with an all speed pitch off the outside corner Hector did don't remember him with that stance last no. year though no something new 2-2 two -two now 
Full count. Lays off the high fastball. Pedroia will be off with the next pitch with two outs. So you wonder if he'll go off speed or something away now. Three two. This one's out to center. Playable for Trout. We head to the top of the fourth. Ibar Trout Pujols coming out with the Angels down two nothing. We've seen a, a ton of fans on this road trip, Baltimore, Toronto, and of course, always here in Boston. Were we in Toronto on this road trip? We were. We were actually uh, in Baltimore a week ago today, I think. Ibar, fly ball to left his first time up. Shoots this one down the line, slicing out of play. See the adjustments made here, second time through again, Smiley. Perfect through three. Yep, nine up, nine down. As you mentioned a lot of fly ball outs, just two ground ball outs, seven in the air. Pushing a butt on the first base side. Nice job by Miley to spin around, field that, and throw out Ibar for the first down. Yeah, if he doesn't make that play, that's a hit. Well played by Miley, very good fielding pitcher. Take a look at her 18 TU versus Rewind. Mike Trout does everything amazingly well. The invisible slide to third. Originally called out and eventually overturned. Foot on head and foot on the base. Part of that big, huge nine run inning. For that great slide by Mike Trout. Grounded out to Brock Holt in his first inning plate appearance. Mike came in batting 302 with 11 home runs, 24 runs batted in. Three and no down. Trouty doesn't do it often, but I think if he gets a fastball here, especially the way he hits in this ballpark, he might be swinging. He is, and he lifts one down the line. Castillo toward foul territory will stay on the grass and make the catch. Two down. Pretty good pitch to drive, but just got underneath it. He likes anything down in the strike zone, in or away. Albert with a fly ball to center. One 
one one now. Well, he's had a couple of rough outings this year, which he's given up seven runs, but the last couple of starts have been very good for him. This is grounded to short. Sharply hit, but right to Xander Bogarts. 12 up, 12 down for Wade Miley. We head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Boston on top. your Southern California Toyota dealers. Back to Santiago, back to work. The uh, Trinity Church in downtown Boston. We have many beautiful buildings, architecture throughout the city. Yeah, Jim Sharon get a lot of great pictures. Our whole crew here in Boston has been fantastic. Red Sox leading at 2 nothing. Ortiz, Bogarts, and Napoli to face Hector Santiago. Big Poppy broke his bat, grounded out the pool holes in the second, so he's 0 for 1. Upstairs. One ball, two strikes. Tease came at batting 233 on the year. 39 years of age now. That's a pretty good pitch. Just missed off the plate. 2 2. Has hit just 115 against left handed pitching this year. Two ninety eight against the righties. Taylor Featherson really out shallow right field. The overshift. Ground ball. I think it broke his bat. Freeze to the backhand. And there's the first down of the fourth. Good job, good throw from David Freeze. Backhand had time to gather himself, throw a perfect throw over to pool holes. I watched some TV last night watching the Ducks double overtime game against the Blackhawks. What a, an amazing series that has turned into. Shifts back to Anaheim. This week. Yeah, the three goals in the uh, 30 plus seconds. 
I wasn't sure if I was actually watching that <laughs> in real time. I just thought, I don't know, I was just busy in the room there, packing stuff up, and I'm thinking, is this a replay? This is out towards shallow center field, and Trout not going to get there. It'll fall in for a bloop single. I had to ask my son to watch the game with me because uh, that they score again. It's amazing how quick they can score. Both teams explosive offensively. It's going to be fun. Game five coming up. It's a Tuesday. Make that tomorrow. It'll be a lot of fun in that whole area then. Napoli looks at a strike. Napoli, two run home run in the second. Eighth of the year now with 19 runs batted in. High fastballs. He got one there. Did not catch up to that 91 mile an hour fastball from Hector Santiago. Two strikeouts, no walks, and four hits allowed for Santiago. Got to throw 71st pitch. Big lead for Bogarts at first base. Time was called last second. They estimated Napoli's home run in the second inning at 451 feet. Straight away center. You see Mike Sosha over in the dugout. Putting signs on for Chris Ionet. It's not for the pitches, it's for sometimes hold the baseball, step off for the pitcher, throw with the first. Two balls, two strikes now. On this homestand, Napoli's hit 389. His batting average creeping up closer and closer to 200. Two two, swing and a miss, got him. Good slider down and in. Took a number of high fastballs, and that time going down and in with a slider. Target set well by Ionetta. But even that swing and miss, so he still tracked that pretty well. Two outs of the man at first, and Rusny Castillo up the right fielder. He's over one. Bogarts takes off. Castillo swings and skies one to right. Cole Calhoun is underneath it, makes a catch. And the Red Sox are done here in the fourth. We'll head to the fifth. Halo still looking for their first base runner of the ball game. The Angels down 2 nothing.
Cherokee with an EPA estimate of 31 miles per gallon. Visit Jeep.com for more information. By AT&T Uverse, more live channels on the go than cable. And by Subaru. Test drive the all-new 2015 Subaru Forester or go to Subaru.com to learn more. 2-0 Boston, top of the fifth inning. Cole Calhoun, David Priest, Chris Iadetta trying to solve the puzzle that is Wade Milan. 12 up and 12 down for the lefty. And Cole will look at a strike. Calhoun 0 for 1, a fly ball to left field in the second inning. Miley, a guy that could uh, be classified as a uh, pitch to contact type of guy. 44 hits at 42 in the third inning. Just 29 strikeouts, 17 walks. And Cole hits one out to center field. Squared it up, but right to Mookie Betts. One down. Miley last year, 8 and 12 with the Arizona Diamondbacks with a 4.34 ERA. All star in his first season. That was 2012. As a matter of fact, finished second in the American League, pardon me, National League Rookie of the Year voting to Bryce Harper in 2012. 16 game winner. Freeze now three for six in his career against Miley. He hit a rocket to right field. His first at bat. See if he tracks one here. And that's the pitch you can jump on if he makes a mistake on the inner half of the plate on that cut fastball, especially as a right handed batter, pull it and get it over the green monster. Freeze with a fly ball to right his first time up. David again late on that fastball. Just the 42nd pitch throw by Miley, 25 strikes. Ground ball. Bogart scoops it up. Very free, slow running down the line. I wonder if he just tripped up a little bit there. Folks, the Angels take on the Padres on Monday at 6.05. Join us at the Big A for spectacular Memorial Day postgame fireworks show presented by Sungevity. Purchase your tickets today by visiting the Angels Stadium ticket office or online at angels.com. Spectacular. David appears to be all right. Took the like, uh, slow out of the box and kind of. Slow across the bag as well. We can see with this infield grass how the baseball gets slowed down going to the infielder. He looked like he's got his cleat caught going down the line. Between the dirt and the grass. Two balls and one strike. Out talking to him also. Three and one now. He's talking about that he took a step going down towards first base. CJ Crone on deck. And there's a walk. To the first base run of the ball games, courtesy of the base on balls with two outs here at the fifth. Anytime you haven't been out of that stretch position to start a game off. It's a hitter, especially a power hitter like CJ Crone. You look to see if you can get a mistake. Be the first pitch he'll throw from the stress position. See if he let one out over the plate. See if you can hook one over the green monster for CJ Crone. Crone, a big rip. Fouls that one straight back off the mask. No one count. That pitch was right down the heart of the plate. Fouled it straight back. The mask. Crowing over one with a ground ball to third.
Halo still looking for their first hit of the afternoon. Just picked up their first base runner in the walk, the two of Iadetta. Just missed inside. Bat. Sounded like it anyway. Fouls it off. Yep. And it ran that one in off the plate. I say that's the biggest difference for Miley over the last three starts. First four starts of the year, he was a guy that lived in pretty much all the Red Sox starters, living on the outside part of the plate, just pitching away, but establishing in to righties has been huge. As Crone fouls the breaking ball. Yeah, the one thing, especially when you, you know, you've come from a new team, you're pitching this ballpark as a lefty, you always think, I got to pitch away. I don't want to miss on the inner part of the plate. Any pop-up can get out down the left field here in Fenway Park over that green monster. So you kind of shy away from going inside, but you also realize to be effective away, you have to pitch inside, and that's what he's done of late. Check swing. That's a hit by pitch, or they call it a foul ball. Now Hirschbeck, I think, says. Uh, I think they're yeah. going to ask if he swung the bat or not. Well, it looked like John Hirschbeck was saying it was a foul ball. The way he was walking out toward the mound. Now he's asking for help. So it's a hit by pitch. John Tumpain, the first base umpire, agreeing with uh, Hirschbeck. He's calling timeout because the ball was dead at that point. Yeah, he didn't go. They're all, it looks like they may all get together potentially. Just to make sure that from that angle, first base side, as an umpire, maybe see it. Everyone going to get together here to make sure that was not a foul ball off the bat or a swing. But look with the way CJ Crone reacted. It looked like he got his hand. Yeah. Miley Leon thought it was a foul ball. Go ahead and look at this one. Yeah, this would this would be a crew would, chief review. Yes, and it looks like uh, Mike Sosha doesn't like what's happening here. I think what he's perhaps saying is, that, "Listen, you you pointed down to John Tempain, the first base umpire. He gave you the safe sign. This is reviewable this year. So they're going to check. Well, as it stands right now, it's a hip batter." I don't think they're even worried about the swing at no. all. They wonder if it hit the bat or the hand. Because if you swing and you cross the plate and it hits your hand, that still counts as a swing because at that point your hand is basically part of the bat when you swing through the zone. This is a, a crew chief review here. John Hirschbeck, the home plate umpire, is the crew chief. They're uh, showing an angle on the uh, center field board here. It almost makes it look as if maybe the ball hit the knob of the bat, which would make it a foul ball. But if it hits any part of your hand, though, and you haven't swung, it's still going to be a hit by pitch. Take it off the headset here. They're calling it a foul ball. Yeah, that's what I thought. In that one angle we saw here at the ballpark. Call on the field was foul ball. That's what we're being told. And so the call stands. 
So Crone was selling it going down the line. That's what I thought when Hirschbeck threw his hands up. That. Uh, that he was signaling a foul ball, but uh, as it stands, it withstands. So one ball, two strikes. I had that over at first. And that is hooked in the left field, so it works out in the Angels' favor. Zion Edible stop at second. It's the first hit of the ballgame for the Halos. They've got a couple of men on here with two outs. Yeah, CJ Crone stayed back very well in that swing. And it's good to see that from CJ is the first hit of the game for the Angels on that line drive by CJ Crone, keeping that back foot still, making contact with the dirt. A lot of times he's lifted that foot off the ground completely. And fooled on some off-speed pitch, but stayed back well there. And a shot in the left field for a base hit for Crone. Matt Joyce fouls one straight back, and it's an 0-1 count. Joyce getting the start today in place of Colin Calgill in left field, who was scratched after BP. Matt over one with a fly ball to center. Three infielders on the right side, so I net able to take a huge lead at second. Two nothing Boston. Choice pulls it foul. Oh, a two. Away, first pitch inside the next. More likely we'll see a slider down and away now. Choice pulls one down the line. That's a fair ball. It's a foot race, and Miley wins, ends up diving after. The foot hit the bag. And now Joyce thinks that ball was foul. That's the third out of the inning. Mike Socha, Mike, Mike wants to come out and have it looked at. Socha wants to talk with John Hirschbeck here. He's waiting to look in at Dino Evil to see if it's worth even looking at. He said no. Well, Mike is not going to ask for a review here, and so that will do it. 2 nothing, Boston leads it. Roya for the uh, Red Sox here in the fifth. 73 pitches for Hector Santiago. Three strikeouts, four hits allowed. One of which was the home run in Napoli.
Brock Holt, the third baseman, hit a fly ball to left to the second inning. She's 0 for 1. Pitch was pretty close. And they got the lower part of the strike zone. Point as a pitcher, you love when you see John Hirschbeck behind the plate. He's a guy that will generally give you the corners. Likes to call strikes. Likes to ring up hitters. Two on a close pitch. Full count now. Leon on deck, then Pedroia at the top of the order. In the air to right center field. Long run for everyone. It's not going to be caught. It'll bounce into the seats. And it goes a double for Holt. This pitch is on the inner half of the plate. A pitch he can do some damage to away and down. Not as much. Fortunately enough, that ball bounced into the stands with his speed. That was going to have a good chance that that be a triple. Leon, the catcher, a fly ball to right in the third inning. Shows bunt, takes upstairs. Like Swihart had caught the first two games of the series for Boston. But back to the mound. Hector thought about throwing a third, but uh, takes the out. He might have had a shot at him at third base. He got all, all pitching rubber and down all in the grass in front of the pitcher's mound very quickly. So the infield will play in now. Yeah, there's no doubt in my mind he has a play there. He, uh, if you're going to make that play, you have to make that decision right away. It all depends on also if Chris Iannetta called to throw the first base right away. I mean, that might have been the, the call from Iannetta right away to Santiago. Pedroia this afternoon, one for two. Struck out on the first, singled in the third. No balls and two strikes. Pedroia usually very clutch in these situations and struggled this year with men in scoring position. And he lines this one out to center. It'll work. Trout will make the catch. Brock Holt tags. And it's 3 nothing Red Sox. Almost too good of a pitch there with two strikes. Yeah, Pedroia is going to try to do whatever he takes can do to be able to put that ball in play, shorten up the swing, hit that ball well to center field. Yeah. Out over the plate. Just a 190 average with men in scoring position this year. But he gets a sack fly, two outs now. And here's Mookie Betts, 0 for 2, with a couple of fly balls to right field. One one. One and two. So now a three nothing deficit for the Angels. 
The sixth inning. They have Featherston, Ibar, Trot coming up. That's reaching for that one, spoiling a pretty good pitch. Still one and two. The offense for the Angels is just in, in a, held in check so far this afternoon by Wade Miley. The two base runners allowed. That happened with two outs in the fifth, a walk and a single. That's fouls this one back just above us. You ready to make that play? I was ready. Yeah. If I don't, Mel behind us is toast. She was ducking. Flare on the first base side. Pools might have a shot at this one. Does and makes the catch. And that'll end it for the Red Sox here in the fifth, but they add a run. We head to the top of the sixth inning. Three nothing, Boston. Happily continued to hit the long ball against his former mates to run home run in the scoring starter for Boston. And Wade Miley's been very good getting a lot of fly ball outs. He's been working quickly, getting inside and up, and the defense for the Red Sox have been solid for Miley on the mound. Let's go to lead this one three to nothing here in the top of the sixth. Nine one and two for the Angels. Featherston getting the start. This afternoon at second base for Johnny Giovatello. Skyed one to right field in the third inning, so he's 0 for 1. Taylor now 1 for 21 to start his big league career. Ahead of the count here, two balls, one strike. 14 up, 14 down for Miley before the walk to Chris Ionetta. Down the line foul. <laughs> Called strike three or strike out of the afternoon for Miley. One down. Scott Perotta telecast is presented by authority of the Los Angeles Angels. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Los Angeles Angels. Eric Ibar 0 for 2, a fly ball to left. Tried to bunt his way on in the fourth inning. A terrific play by Miley. He grabbed that baseball before it just got past the mound. Otherwise, it's an infield base hit. Eric fouls this one off to the right. The 
his command has been very good in this game so far for Miley to 65 pitches thrown here into the sixth inning. Trout on deck. It's down it in. And I know he likened him to uh, Burley because of the the pace in which he works. This one's flipped out towards uh, center field. And it's a base hit. Bogarts a valiant effort at it. But it's a single for Eric. But just going back to that comparison, the fact that uh, kind of pitch is very similar to Mark Burley. When Mark Burley was going good, kind of works that cutter in on the hands, turns over a change up away, kind of keeps you honest. And that's why you've seen late swings with foul balls to the right and then jam shot ground ball foul on the left hand uh, yeah. the, uh, down the left field line. He realizes like Burley they can't afford to pitch anything over middle part of the plate. It's going to be squared up well. So if you use both sides of the plate to your advantage. Never allow a hitter to know which side of the plate is his during the course of the bat. And he does have a great pickoff move. 17 career pickoffs for Miley to this season. Trout 0 for 2. Ground ball to third to fly to right. Boston with two of the second, one of the fifth. It's a 3 nothing here in the sixth inning. One thing we haven't seen from Miley, he'll throw a, a fastball inside. He hasn't backed it up often with another fastball back inside. That is hooked in the left field, and that's headed to the corner. Ibar will turn and head to third. Trout on his way to second. De Sarcina is going to wave Ibar in. The throw, there isn't one. It's held by Xander Bogarts, an RBI doubled for Mike Trout. And the Angels get on the board. It's 3 to 1 Boston. And that's a good read by Gary De Sarcina. And I was talking to Dino Evil just about that here at Fenway Park. But down the line, you have to work your way towards the third baseline to be able to see if the left fielder can go down and get that baseball and that was that change up away hits it right down the left field line for a double for trout and the way that baseball kicked away from H Hanley Ramirez and Gary D. Sarcina had to work his way towards that third baseline to be able to see if that play was going to be able to be made because you can't in your normal spot as a third base coach Pujols swinging first pitch pops one up Napoli drifting out and now it's the second baseman Pedroia taking charge and Mike ended up losing that in the sun Two outs, big out for Miley. Now it's Cole Calhoun. It's not an easy thing being a third base coach in this ballpark. You really have to move around to be able to see and track the baseball, especially down that left field line. And Gary D. Sarcina did that one well. Colo for two. A couple of fly ball outs, one to left, one to center. Three to one Boston here in the sixth inning. Just low. Child with the big lead at second. Dribbler to the first baseman, Mike Nabley. And that'll do it for the Angels. They do get on the board, courtesy of the Trout. RBI double. We hit at the bottom of the six. Boston on top 3-1.
Victor Santiago back out of the mound. Three strikeouts for him. No walks. Five hits allowed. He'll face Ramirez, Ortiz, and Bogarts here in the sixth inning for the Red Sox. Go back to my Hyundai key to this game. I stay away. Especially against Ramirez. He's done a good job as far as staying away off speed. Enough fastballs in. Cut fastballs in to keep him honest. But get him out. Away. Hanley 0 for 2 with a strike on the fly ball to center. That is pulled down the left field line, and it is foul. James Hoy, the third base umpire, with the call. There is a butt, uh, what, two feet maybe, if that. If, uh, out territory between the line and that wall. Yeah, not much at all. A lot of times you'll have a fan reaching out over that wall also. Ninety two pitches for Santiago. It's a really long look in with an 0-2 count. Well, Chris wanted that fastball inside. Hector didn't look like he was fully committed to throw that fastball inside. Ended up pitching that ball off the outside corner. You know, more than likely go right back. Inside, or is he going to shake off for an all speed pitch? But again, another little step out here by uh, Hanley. If I'm Hector, I'm just going something down in the way now. One two pitch, and he punches this one down the line, and that could be trouble, and that is just foul. See, when you see a pitcher not fully committed to going inside, that's twice now. Chris has put the sign the fastball in and he's missed away that far. Just go with something all speed. That's kind of been the issue for Hector today, although not uh, not erratic. In a key situation, he has missed his spots and a lot of it has been to right handed batters missing away. The night that has been set up inside. Two balls, two strikes. And Hanley on that one almost anticipated a pitch in. And for me, the change up down off the plate and, and away. That's a called strike three. Locked him off. One down. Good spot on that one. Was committed to that fastball that time inside. Target was set down enough where he was going to make sure he got to that inside part of the plate and down. Ortiz 0 for 2 with a couple of ground outs today. One for 11 in the series. Oh, a two. That's a good spot there. Called strike three. Down goes David Ortiz. Two outs. You know, Ortiz didn't like the call. I don't blame him. A little bit off the outside corner. We mentioned that earlier with John Hirschbeck. If you're a pitcher, if you establish hitting the outside corner, you will get those pitches even on occasion that are off the plate, like that one. Slider. Definitely a pitcher's umpire. So hitters 
have to take uh, advantage of the situation. If they get a pitch to uh, swing at, just take it out of Hershbeck's hands. Otherwise, you could be in trouble, especially if you're behind in the count. Swing, be aggressive, swing the bat. Borderline pitches, especially when a pitcher has established that he will throw strikes, you will get those borderline calls. Now, if you're wild, no, you don't get it. If you're around the zone, like both pitchers have been in this game so far, you'll get those borderline pitches. Down the line, slicing foul and out of play. 0-2 count on Xander Bogarts. Two for two today with a couple of singles. Halos with a run on three hits, no errors. They've left three men on base. Boston with three runs, five hits, no errors. Stranded two. Angels have Vinny Pistano getting ready in the bullpen. Pulled down the line. That's a fair ball. Hits the bag and headed toward the corner. On an 0-2 pitch, Bogarts picks up his third hit of the ball game. This one's a double. And now Napoli will bat here. And you wonder if Sosha goes to Pistano here, go righty righty. If he stays with Hector. 0-2 pitch, a chance to expand the strike so that ball hit the base and down the line. May have uh, walking Napoli with Castillo on deck, and that's exactly what they're going to do here. Like Pistano, baby, to get Castillo. So far, Hector's thrown well against Castillo. He's very, very aggressive. I think Mike Sosha may give him a shot to pitch to him. Although he's over that 100 pitch mark. If indeed, he does go down to the bullpen. I do like the fact that he's going to make the pitcher on the mound potentially walk the batter, not bring a guy from the bullpen to do that. Napoli will take his place over at first. And it looks like Hector will face Rusny Castillo, the right fielder. Postano will look on for the right field pen. Castillo, 0 for 2. Ground ball to short and a fly ball to right. Bogarts at second, Napoli at first. Down and in. Hector trying to keep it a two run deficit to the Angels. Three Zion had a crone coming up for the Halos in the seventh. Pulled foul. Red Sox betting a line on Castillo. Soon to be 27. Seven years, $72.5 million deal. Defecting from Cuba. Pickoff at first, and they got him. Timing play. And Napoli looks like he's grabbing at his right leg. He may have hurt himself. And uh, they're going to probably take a look at it downstairs. The Red Sox are anyway. That's a play you put on in spring training. See the tag? That tag is yep. applied before he got the foot on the base for sure. Yep, sure enough. Well done. All timing. That look. You just look over as a pitcher and you catch your first base but going towards the base. You throw it at the bag. The tag applied. By Albert Pujols. No argument from the Red Sox. We head to the seventh. Halo's down three to one.
about that in spring training. We, it's all about timing. To, you know exactly when the first baseman is going to make that first step towards the base. A perfect throw over to Pujols. Go to pick off Napoli. David Freeze pulling the first pitch foul to start the seventh inning. It's a gutsy call too because everything's got to work out perfectly. You miss the throw and all of a sudden that uh, that's a run with Bogarts at second base. Yeah, I, I've always been a big believer in that timing. Sometimes to be able to get through an inning a pitcher just needs one of those type of plays put on. Because even though you feel comfortable with Castillo he's made a couple good pitches to him to get him out earlier. I think that's the right decision. Freeze chops this one toward the middle. Pedroia has it to the back end. Gets up throws the first. And gets freeze. What a play by Dustin Pedroia for the first down. And not only did he get to that baseball, but to quickly throw it. Talk about great, great baseball instincts. Pedroia has it. Freeze thinks he has a base hit up the middle. Not only dives to be able to get him quickly in the throw over the first base, just gets David Freeze by half a step. The slide and spin around the perfect way. You go the other way around and try to. Get up and throw it the other way. There's no way you're throwing him out. But spin back around, firm throw, enough to get Freeze at first for the Gold Glover. So one out, nobody on it. Chris Sidenet up. Sidenet for one. Pop up in a walk. Looks at a strike there. It was the first base run of the Angels got to this ball game. That was with two outs in the fifth. Chris pulls one toward third, and Brock Holt with a diving stop to his left. Two down. Well, it's amazing those defensive plays made behind you when you have a pitcher working so quickly. They're on their toes. Two outstanding plays in the infield this inning alone for the Red Sox. Holt's played pretty much every position on that baseball field. Nice play at third base. Strong throw to get Ionetta. Two up, two down, and here's Crone. TJ one for two. He pulls this one foul. himself a one two three seventh including a couple of fine defensive plays by the Boston Red Sox seventh inning stretch time here on this Memorial Day weekend Boston leading the Angels by the score of three to one we're going to turn things over as we honor America with the singing of God bless America dreams come true for the families of New England each afternoon you aid in these life-changing efforts by supporting the 50-50 raffle presented by DraftKings Today's winning numbers are now posted on the center field video board. And now, before Josh Cantor leads us in the singing of Take Me Out to the Ball Game on the Fenway organ, we ask you to please rise. Here to perform God Bless America is a special guest who represents all of the courageous siblings of those with autism. Singing for her older brother, Ryan, Please welcome a freshman at Sauchine Valley Technical High School, Marisa Kearney. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above. To the prairies, to the oceans, white with foam, God bless. 
like cold hard facts. Hector Santiago back out to the mound. Entering today, fourth best ERA in the American League since the All-Star break last year, 2.67. That's with pitchers with 20 or more starts. The other pitchers, Dallas Keuchel, Kluber, and King Felix, the only ones better during that stretch as far as ERA than Hector Santiago, who's throwing the ball very well here today again. He'll face the bottom third of the order, at least to start. Castillo was at the plate when Napoli got picked off over at first to end the sixth inning. Holt on deck, Leon to follow after that. Two balls and one strike. Hector with five strikeouts, one walk. The walk was intentional. But much better with the, the walk totals in the last couple of starts. I see it. This one down the line. Long run for Calhoun, and this one is going to go foul. This is about as tough a right field as there is in baseball. A lot of room to cover at the angle walls, short, pesky pole down the right field line. Short walls in the outfield. Yep. Very wide warning tracks also. Other than that, it's fun to play yeah. right field. Yeah. Left field, a different animal. Left field here at Fenway is like played right field at Yankee Stadium. Just play shallow. Play shallow, take the singles away, because anything over your head is probably a home run. The center field is no day at the beach here either. Yeah. That corner at 420. Full count. And the fact is none of these walls are real fun to run into if you're an outfielder. Not a lot of give anywhere. Chopper to third. One down. Hey, folks, the Angels will host the Padres on Wednesday at 7.05, and fans in attendance will receive a military rally among the courtesy of Jack in the Box while supplies last. Purchase tickets today at the Angels Stadium. Ticket office are online at angels.com. Finally get to go home. Padres, Tigers, Tampa Bay. Long homestand. Yeah. And then back out to the east. Yankees and Tampa. But then uh, the Angels are done with the American League East on the road. First one to Brock Holt up and away. Holt with a fly ball to left in the second. Doubled and scored in the fifth. So I went out to that uh, triangle area in right center field. Ground rule double. It was sacrificed to third base. And then uh, came home on the sack fly by Pedroia. Two balls, one strike. This easily the most pitches that Hector has thrown at a start this year. He's had 119. Starting to gain respect from Mike Sosha to give him that opportunity to throw that amount of pitches and pitch deeper into games. He has heeded the advice, and that's something that he's always wanted to do is kind of stay engaged, be given the opportunity. He wants to start, obviously. Uh, keeps getting better and better as far as uh, working deeper into games. And that's a called strike three down goes Holt two down. Boy, he has a lot of confidence of late. That's the most important thing, whether you're a hitter or a pitcher, is confidence. And he has that right now, and he, not only himself, but he also has that in his manager and pitching coach. Painting the outside corner there, getting that call. That spot again at 93 mile an hour fastball in his 121st pitch of the game. Impressive 
from Hector. His career high for pitches during a game of 123. And that was as a member of the White Sox. July 3rd, 2013 against Baltimore. The 0 for 1 did have a sack butt of the fifth. Fouls this one back. Yeah, good life on his fastball. 93. That amount of pitches thrown in the game. Lined out the left, the base hit. Two out single. Mike Sosha's taking a step up on the. Uh, yeah, with the draw steps. up, this may be it now. And there comes Sosha. So Hector establishes a uh, new career high as far as pitches thrown, 124. And he will depart here with two outs in the seventh inning. Troya coming up. The Angels are going to the bullpen. And we have ourselves a pitching change. Vinny Pistano coming into the ball game. The Angels down three to one. Donald coming into the game. Or in and out, who's in, who's out. Benny pitching for the uh, second consecutive night. Went one third of an inning last night. Gave up a run. It was unearned. One hit, one strikeout. Pitching his 15th game. 1 0 record and a 450 ERA. He's always been a guy who's been his numbers as far as strikeouts. 201, 201 career innings, 242 punch outs for Benny Pistano. Fastball from his arm angle, 90-92, and a good sharp slider. You'll face Pedroia, who's one for two. Pedroia picking up a 17th RBI. Sack fly to fifth. One ball, no strikes. Hector Santiago, six and two thirds, seven hits, including the home run to Napoli. Six strikeouts, one walk, and that was an intentional walk. Also to Napoli. Three runs, although he's responsible for uh, Leon over at first base. He wanted to peel, did not go. Two balls, no strikes. Three and zero now. And that's a four-pitch walk coming out of the pen with two outs here in the seventh. 
will put a man in scoring position. It's something that will upset your pitching coach and manager, especially coming out of the bullpen. Your job to be able to make sure you get that out quickly. The offense going. Just a couple more innings to be able to get a couple runs to tie this game up against a very good pitcher here today, Wade Miley. Great job, though, by Hector Santiago. So first and second, two outs. Mookie Betts at the plate. 0 for 3 today. A couple of fly balls to right and a pop-up to Pujols. Tipped into the mid. Oh, a two. Fouled off. Third appearance in the last four games for Pistano. Angels have uh, Cesar Ramos getting ready. The team's due up two batters from now, just in case. Bounce again, fouls it off. Cal remains at no balls and two strikes. And a lot of the plate on a no two pitch. Back to Leon, and that one misses up and away. Two balls, two strikes. That's the pitch you got to get him on. Last thing you want to do is go 3 2 and give the uh, base runner Leon, who's the catcher, a head start. The joy of the trail runner at first base. Two 2. Swing and a miss down goes Betts and Pistano gets out of it. Seventh complete here in Boston. Halo's down three to one.
for Angels Live with Jose Moda. We'll get you some reaction, even some Angel fans here. Go figure. It'll be short and sweet as the Angels are heading home for a 10-game homestand. You know, from this vantage point, I see some pretty cool things. Eric Ibar, for instance, when the Angels are throwing the ball around the infield, will fire the ball on occasion from about 10 feet away to rookie Taylor Featherston, about 80 miles an hour. I asked Eric why he does it. He says he wants to keep Taylor sharp and in the game and not tight. Taylor said, it is coming at me pretty hard, but I love it that he does it, and it keeps him invested and always ready to play. That just shows me, guys, Victor and Gooby, that Eric Iber is that type of leader to do that for a rookie. He's probably taking exception to the fact you said it's 80 miles an hour, not 90. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, that could be it. Maybe it was more like 75. Wow. <laughs> Downward trend. Joyce. There's a one ball, one strike count to start this eighth inning. Joyce Featherston and Ibar. Though it's Johnny Giabatella that's come out to the on deck circle. And really not an on deck circle, more of an on deck area close to home plate. 2 1. Joyce pulls one right to Mac Napoli. And there's down number one. Joyce so for three now on the afternoon. And there's Giabatella. Featherson finishes the afternoon going over two. John hitting 246 now. Last night went over four. And Mike Sosha wants to see him start hitting the ball hard on the ground and line drive. Too many fly ball outs for him of late. Just a 179 batting average in the month of May. Ahead of the count of two balls and no strikes. Wade Miley with two punch outs, one walk, and three hits allowed. Two singles and a double. Good job as far as keeping a lot of his pitches down in the strike zone. Not many middle part of the plate at all in this entire game. Three and one. Trying to get on board any way he can. Ibar on deck, then Trout. There's the 3 2 now. Givatella pulls with a third. It goes off of Holt. Well, that ball got him square. And Giavatello will reach on the infield hit. Holt holding that left arm wrist close to the body. Well, that got him pretty square. Kind of believe it's going to be some. Yeah, here we come. See somebody, a trainer, to come out to see him. It's like the wrist area. Hit extremely hard. One hopper. And off the arm and maybe even off the rib cage area, too, but definitely off the left arm. Now it's time for the in the drivers. He brought to you by Kia. He's looking on with Holt at this point. Wade Miley has thrown the ball exceptionally well here today. Seven and a third. It's one earned run, four hits. Been perfect for the first 14 batters of the game before a walk. He's thrown the ball very well. His last two starts, his two earned runs in 13 and two thirds innings pitched. Started off slow. It certainly has been pitching much, much better of late for the Red Sox. Some are saying that it's coincided with Carl Willis's arrival as the new pitching coach here in Boston. Whatever changes he has made, it's worked for Miley here of late. He's never had a complete game, and more than likely, Eric Ibar will be his last batter 
regardless. Looks like Holt's going to stay in the game. Awful long conversation here. So Holt will stay in the game now. Smiley getting a couple extra pitches here as he waits. John Farrell now has a conversation with uh, Miley. I would assume that counts as an official visit at that point. It should count as an official visit. And that's what he's just pointing over. That does count as an official visit. That's John Hersbeck is relaying over to Mike Sosha. So what that means, if he goes back out to the mound at all, he, Miley has to come out of the game. Holt playing in at third base and toward the line a little bit. Giovatella at first. That's an incredible move he has to first base. Giovatella was barely just off the base and still had to dive back quickly. Just like you mentioned, a lot of similarities between him and Burley. Burley has that great move to first base also. Eric looks at a strike. Ibar today, one for three with a single and a run scored the sixth. Pulls one to third. Holt has it. Feeds Pedroia for one. The relay back to first and in time. With Mike Trout on deck, Eric Ibar grounds into the 5-4-3 uh, inning ending. Double play. We head to the bottom of the eighth. Three to one. Boston. Playoff action plus highlights of tonight's MLB games. You can see Fox Sports Live tonight at 11 p.m. on Fox Sports 1 or see it simulcast here on Fox Sports West. Cam Bedrosian called up before the game today with Mike Moore going on the disabled list. Takes over on the mound. Three scoreless innings and two games for the Angels. And he'll face Ramirez, Ortiz, and Bogarts. Three, four, and five. 
Halo's down by two runs. Johnny stays in the game and is at second base. Another changes for the Angels. Morin, by the way, if you weren't with us earlier on the DL with a strained oblique. Ground ball up the middle. And that'll seek through for a base hit. Seven leadoff men on board for Boston. And here comes Ortiz. Right back over the head of Cam Pedros into the outfield. The Angels have done a real good job against Hanley Ramirez so far in this series. That base hit up the middle, though. A leadoff hit brings up David Ortiz now. Especially the way Boston has pitched, Miley in the bullpen. The Red Sox cannot afford to allow this lead to expand. We saw that happen last night. It was a 4 2 game. It became 6 2 in the seventh. 8 3 was the final. One ball, one strike on Ortiz, who's 0 for 3. Two ground outs and a strikeout looking. The Drosian at AAA this year, 11 games, 1 0 record, 1 save, and a 3.15 ERA. 27 strikeouts at 20 innings. Speed pitch. A change up. 90 mile an hour change up. Two balls, two strikes. Handler Ramirez over at first base. Three infielders on the right side. He's just to the left of the shortstop position. And that was pretty close. Checked his swing. Full count. Ramirez takes off. Ortiz pops it up to shallow right center. Cole Calhoun comes in. Makes the catch one down. Brings up Xander Bogarts. Folks, the Angels will host the Tigers on Friday. That's a 7.05 start. And fans in attendance will receive a Matt Shoemaker bobblehead courtesy of Thermidor while supplies last. Get your tickets today by visiting the Angels Stadium ticket office or online at angels.com. A cool giveaway. Matt Shoemaker bobblehead. A little conversation with him today. A nice, good, firm bullpen session. Check in of Hadley. Pedrosian trying to keep it a two run deficit. The Angels in the ninth inning have Trout, Pujols, and Calhoun do up. Koji Uehara getting ready for Boston. Closing. Hadley takes off. The hit and run is on, and it works to perfection. First and third with one out now.
A four hit game for Xander Bogarts. Just went with the pitch and tried to do too much. You can see how he let that baseball travel to hit the ball in that vacated spot at second base. A ton of talent Bogarts has. Putting together with the bat today. Bedrosian to face Mike Napoli. One for two. Two run home run in the second. Struck out of the fourth. Intentionally walked in the sixth. Challenger with a good fastball. 96 miles per hour. Go what count? No one too. Well, that was going in quickly at our guys in the radio booth. <laughs> Never doubt. Terry Smith was right there just in case. Yeah. Breaking ball in the dirt, smothered by Ionetta. Well, well played by Chris Ionetta. Hard slider well off the plate. Kept it in front. First and third, one out. Three to one Boston here in the bottom of the eighth. Outfield very deep for the Angels. Joyce about as deep as you can go with the Green Monster behind you. Two-two fouled off to the right. Pitches thrown by Cam so far. Eight strikes. Hector Santiago in six and two thirds. Pastano finished up the seventh, going a third. Way upstairs, a full count. And they have Rusty Castillo, the right fielder on deck. Where Bogarts will be going here on a 3 2 count just in case Napoli would hit the ball on the ground and prevent a potential double play from ending the inning. Bogart's going to be on the move. Middle infielders have come halfway now with Ibar and Chiavatel and Eric reminding Cam that on a comeback you're going to uh, the middle infielder trying to turn two. Need to get that opportunity. Bogart takes off. Napoli hits one out toward left center field. Joyce. Near the wall that goes off the wall. Hanley will come in to score. Bogarts right on his heels. He will score. And it's a two RBI double. And that makes it five to one. Napoli once again. And coming into this series. Not seeing the ball real well, but certainly through this series he has. Fastball this ran on the inner half. He's quick on his swing right now. He has shortened up his swing and he's strong. Hit went off the wall there. 
for a double. Driving in two more. Four RBI in the game for Napoli. Eight RBIs in this three-game set. That one's off of Bedrosian. That'll go as a single for Castillo. Nevla, Mike Sosha going to have to go out and check on Cam Bedrosian on that line drive right back up the middle. Boy, a rude return for Cam Bedrosian to the big leagues here in this eighth inning. See if they got him on the hip. Fourth hit allowed by Bedrosian. And it looks like we're going to have Pablo Sandoval here pinch hitting for Brock Holt. First appearance for Sandoval in this series. A sore knee has kept him out. His first season with Boston. 268 batting average, five home runs, 16 runs batted. And he's 0 for 1 as a pinch hitter. He's really struggled from the right side of the plate. Left handed, however, he's hitting 361. And here comes Mike Sosha. And with the announcement of Sandoval, Cesar Ramos was getting ready, so. Caesar's going to be called upon here. Spin Sandoval around to hit from that right side. The Drozhin's return to the big leagues does not go well. Four hits and two runs. He's responsible for the two guys on base. It is five to one Boston. Trying to get the uh, last couple of outs here. He inherits runners at first and third. And he will face uh, Pablo Sandoval. Ramos, 17th game, 2 0 record, a 2.45 ERA. Pitched last night, went one third of an inning, got David Ortiz, did a fly ball out. Base hit makes it six to one. Heading to third base and he falls down. Down they got him in a rundown. That's Castillo, two outs. RBI single for Sandoval. That run gets charged to Petrosian.
just over the head of Giovatel, then charged well by Cole, but Castillo falls down and get another outfield assist for Cole Calhoun. A big RBI for Sandoval. Jeff Bianchi, who was uh, activated today, takes over at first base for Sandoval as the pinch runner. A lot of talk of late about Pablo Sandoval ditching the right handed approach against left handed pitching. Delivers against a lefty from the left side of the plate. The RBI single. Mentioned how poor his numbers have been this year from the right side. Just two for 41 from the right side of the plate. Down the line foul. Same Little thing team. happened with Shane Victorino over here. He used to be a switcher, just went exclusively exclusively to the right side hitting. Now on the disabled list for the Red Sox. Not an easy thing to do. You've been doing that for such a long period of time in your career. All of a sudden you give up on the switch hitting. A different look as the pitch is coming in there. Yeah. Everything's trained. The eye, the stance, the hands, the body. This one's popped up on the left side. Ibar and freeze. Eric Ibar calls for it. And this half inning's in the books, but not before Boston tacks on three. We head to the ninth. The Angels down six to one. MercuryInsurance.com today to get a fast free quote and see how much you can save. And by Hyundai, the Memorial Day sales event is going on now at your Hyundai dealer. Visit buyhyundai.com today. Boston leads a 6 1 as we start the ninth inning, the rubber game of the series. The Eagles took Friday night's contest. Boston answered last night and uh, this afternoon. It's been all Red Sox. Wade Miley is done after eight innings, and it's Koji Wehara coming into this ball game. Non save situation. 16th game to a rec two and one record easy for me to say in a 1.93 ERA 10 saves on the year and he pitched last night also in a non save situation. You know, is not overpowering with his fastball. But he spots it well throws a lot of strikes 87 85 89 cutter occasional cutter and very good split finger fastball. Trout Pujols Calhoun for the Angels here in the ninth. Trout one for three with an RBI double. The first one is upstairs. Well, 
Wiley might get that opportunity to be able to get his first major league complete game. Not the case, though. 2 0 now. Well, the Angels started this road trip 10 gamer. We could go Friday at Baltimore. With a 17 and 17 record. In jeopardy of um, just going 500 on this road trip. Going home with a 22 and 22 record. This one's pulled to third. And Bianchi has it. One out. And he tests it right away at third base. Ball was hit well by Trout. On the backhand, strong throw to get him out of first. We'll play back. One hopper on the backhand. And the throw of the first base. Alberto for three. Two fly ball outs and a ground out. Sell out here this afternoon. A good day. See the home crowd as Albert breaks his bat and rolls a foul. 605 start tomorrow. San Diego Padres with first of three. She has a pretty big crowd at whole homestand. Be a good one. No balls, two strikes on Albert. Cole on deck. Two outs. Halo's managed five base runners in this ballgame. And a road trip, too, by the way, that started off uh, promising. Take two of three from the Orioles. I won the first two out of three in Toronto also. For losing game four to end up splitting that series. One oh Cole takes downstairs. Houston leading Detroit in the eighth inning, nine to seven. Oakland leading Tampa Bay six to two. That game's in the ninth. Toronto leading Seattle eight to two in the ninth inning as well. This score holds and Houston hangs on. Angels will go home six and a half back in the West. Houston was down pretty big in that game before coming back and taking that lead against the Tigers. 3 1 count. Cole pulls it foul. Three balls, two strikes. David Freeze on deck. There's a 3 2 to Calhoun, and he reaches for this one, spoils it. So we'll reset and do it again. Hector Santiago got the start for the Angels, gave up three runs and six and two thirds, throwing a career high 124 pitches. Six strikeouts and one intentional walk. 
but on the hook for the loss. Cole strikes out, swinging the Angels, drop the finale in this three-game set. 6-1 the final. One of the story of the game, really, for Boston. Wade Miley, the way he threw in. Mike Napoli, four RBI, 19th time in his career he has done that. And every time he's got those four RBIs or more, his team has won. So Napoli was the big key for the offense, and Wade Miley threw the ball exceptionally well in eight very good innings. Hector Santiago takes the loss, is now 3-3 three and three on the season. Wade Miley with the win. He is now 4-4. Four 6-1 four. the final. Boston takes the series and the series finale. Stick around. Angels Live postgame is coming up next.